and now up uh, second district um, for Jackson County Legislator, Armita Dupree. Good evening, members of RDA. I'm Armita Dupree. I thank you for having me. I thank you for accepting my membership, and I thank you for your endorsement. So I decided that I was going to run for Jackson County Legislature for the 2nd District. Well, what exactly does the 2nd District encompass? It's from Independence Avenue to Bannister Road, Truce, over to Raytown Road. It's quite a large area. Now, by trade, I am a trial attorney, a criminal defense attorney. I was a public defender when I started my career. I came back home from Pennsylvania, that's where I went to school, I became a public defender, and now I have my own law firm. I handle federal and state cases. But that's not the reason why I decided that I was going to run. I decided that I was going to continue the legacy of my family. My father was a public servant, Kansas City Police Department paid for me to go to St. Teresa's Academy and on to college and law school. He, graduated, he retired from KCPD as a homicide detective and he also worked in intervention. Our interdiction with the drug stuff, it was kind of scary because he got into a big fight out there at the airport and they went tumbling through the window and it was a big scare. So, it's that legacy of public service that has gotten me fired up. Protecting our city, protecting our citizens. Now, as a trial attorney, I was in court about a month ago, and my client was charged with an assault. She was on bond. She was able to post a bond. So while we're waiting for her case to be called, in shuffles a gentleman, He's in, he's in chains. His public defender runs up to the bench and she says, Your Honor, my client has been in custody for over seven days now. He's getting ready to lose his job. Please let him out of custody so that he can keep his job. The judge <coughs> denied the request. The judge set the case over for another 25 to 30 days. Said, hopefully you guys can get this case resolved. Now, under normal circumstances, you know, it's like, well, this individual's in custody, that's fine and well. But the issue that I have with that is that this was a nonviolent offender. He was charged with criminal non support. Yes, when you have a child, you need to pay for that child, you need to take care of that child. But being locked up at the Jackson County Jail is no place for that man or women, because I hadn't had female clients when I was a public defender. My first goal is to work with our executive, work with our prosecutor's office, work with our courts, so that we can re-evaluate who we are putting in the jail. Nonviolent offenders have absolutely no legitimate place to be in that, occupying that bed space when there are people out here who are killing these women and yes. children. Thank Time you. is up on nonviolent offenders. There are alternative places and options like county house arrest and pretrial release. There are options. Also, I'm a homeowner. My property taxes, those things have been going up and up and up. And I'm looking down the street at my neighbor's home, and I'm looking at my home, my property taxes have skyrocketed $250, where theirs are staying the same. It's time for there to be fair and consistent property tax assessments here in Jackson County. That's a goal that I have with working with the administration to get fair and consistent assessments and, and ways to assess our property taxes. Last but not least, I want to make sure our children 
especially in the urban core and in the inner city, who literally have to walk through hell to get to school. I want to make sure they're getting the treatment and the preventive, the preventative treatment and resources that they need. We all pay into our combat. We all pay into combat. There's programs that can be established for these children. I was canvassing on 31st, uh, in 31st Street. I stopped at Walgreens one night. I'm just running, get some water because I was hot and tired. I was like, oh, oh yeah, Lord. But anyway, um, when I went in there, it was late. It was about 8.30 or so. And there was a little boy. He was in custody. He was in cuffs. On 31st and Prospect at that Walgreens. He was no more than, I'd say, eight years old. He was in his little shorts, his little underwear. Little underwear. He was in custody because he decided that he was so hungry he wanted to steal a Lunchable and a juice. A Lunchable and a juice. He wasn't there stealing an electronic, a toy. This baby was hungry and needed to eat. I'm ready to be the legislator for the second district so that we can bring life and hope and energy back to our community programs to prevent and treat this child because where this baby is and he's hungry enough to leave and go to Walgreens for a Lunchable, just imagine what he left back at home. It's time for a change and I'm that change. It's time for a new generation of public servants and you have it right here. Thank you ladies and gentlemen.